man. This November, I have to choose between Joe Biden and Trump. Now is the time to heed the timeless advice from Teddy Roosevelt. Speak softly and carry a big stick. I promise you, the president has a big stick. I promise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like him a lot. Oh, how I wish there was some other third choice I could vote for instead. Hey, wait a minute. I don't have to fear. Because with the Libertarian Party, you don't have to choose between a Democrat or Republican, but rather a non-interventionist and a classical liberalist party instead. Oh boy, I can't wait to see who the candidates are for president. Play the clip. Should someone have to have a government-issued license to drive a car? Hell no. The government requires licenses for, to for far too many things. The government requires licenses for people to broadcast radio. The government requires licenses to get married. They require a license to drive. What's next? Requiring a license to make toast in your own damn toaster? Absolutely not. The license to drive? You know, I'd like to see some competency exhibited by people before they drive. Yeah, this... this sucks. What is up, everybody? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of talking about both the Dems and Republicans for the moment. Like, I get it. Joe Biden doesn't know how to form basic human sentences. What else is new? And don't get me started on Trump. He's... orange. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here at least until January 2021. So instead of making fun of both of these guys, let's target a third party instead. May I introduce to you all the porcupine? Yeah, that's right. The Libertarian Party's mascot is the porcupine. And according to the Liberty Warrior, the Libertarian Porcupine is a cute and cuddly creature that is defensive when subjected to aggression. It makes it an ideal symbol for a movement that espouses the primacy of individual rights and minimum state intervention. Uh... Sure, I guess the porcupine invokes that. Can you share your coin with me? Can I have it? No! Oh, really? You son of a bitch, learn to share your goddamn food! So, for some reason, the Libertarian Party has managed to cast some interesting characters as candidates for major political offices across the nation. I mean, some of it has been satirical, while others have been serious. And I mean, dead serious. Hell, the nomination for some of these candidates can be absolutely insane. Back in 2016, James Weeks, who was running for chairman of the Libertarian Party, dropped out of the race by... Stripping? If you slow the video down, you can pinpoint the exact moment the Libertarian Party died. You can't help but feel at least kind of bad for some of the Libertarian Party supporters. Some of them sincerely try and take their party seriously. You know, I, I wanted to make the Libertarian Party to be taken seriously, but, but the fact that he was able to stand up there for five minutes in his underwear was the most ridiculous thing ever. I have read a hundred books on this ideology. I have donated a lot of my own money for this party. That was a joke, and I'm gonna let everybody here say it was a joke! I find that that was, that was so offensive, it was a violation of the non-aggression pledge because it was an attack Thank you, sir. on us as a party. However, some of them are just insane. I would like to ask the body to consider that the Libertarian Party acquire a mascot. And I would like to pr propose Dobby from the Harry Potter series, who in the seventh book says, Dobby has no master. Dobby is a free elf. And Dobby has come to save Harry Potter and his friends! <laughs> Alright. If J.K. Rowling was an American, I wouldn't be surprised if she was somehow nominated to be the nominee for the Libertarian Party, because in many ways she just fits the personality of many of these candidates. When Austin Peterson was arguing that a child shouldn't be able to buy heroin, his own party just booed at him. That being said, at the state level, I would support some legislation that would stop children from being allowed to purchase drugs and prosecute anyone who would put a child in danger. Because I do believe the children do need some protection. Yes, you should not be able to sell heroin to a fighter. 
As funny as this clip is, it really boggles the mind more than anything just due to how bizarre the party is. Daryl Perry ran for the nomination in 2016 and introduced some interesting metaphors involving tomatoes when it came to the debate stage. I read statutes for fun, and so far I have yet to find the word tomato in any statute. But I don't think anybody here would say that tomatoes are not legal. I think that every substance, where it, whether it be cannabis or crystal meth, should be absolutely as legal as tomatoes. There should not be any regulations on how much you buy, grow, sell, possess, consume, sell to your neighbor, give to your neighbor, throw in the air to land on the ground, wherever it may be. No regulations. Everything should be as legal as tomatoes. Something is obviously wrong with this dude, but something about him is so awesome. Heard von Nothaus to go to prison for competition with the Fed, and then we can end the Fed. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and I believe that was a felony. The line between a quote-unquote real libertarian is very fine when it comes to the party. The idea of giving as many freedoms to the individual as possible and to have self-ownership is argued time and time again between libertarians. Just how far should they go in terms of their ideology? Unfortunately, due to the current crisis, we weren't able to see as golden moments for the 2020 Libertarian Convention. However, there were some highlights in terms of arguments between libertarians. Josh Smith is, uh... Child ab abandoner and uh, hey 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 yeah, yeah. hey no. hey! I will mute those mics if Hello. you guys can't respect. You, you cannot oh, abuse your ability to speak over everybody else like that. Okay? Yeah. Dude, he just shut them down. Since most of the convention took place on live Zoom calls, the hilarity and technical difficulties that ensued were pretty marbling. I'm Elijah Boyd, delegation chair from the great state of Alabama, the heart of Dix Dixie where we dare defend our rights. The Gators are hungry, Epstein, Epstein didn't kill himself, and Jeff Sessions sucks. We vote as follows. Of course, I can't talk about the Libertarian Party without talking about a certain boot-wearing individual. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard about him and his satirical approach to politics and nominations. Unlike Daryl Perry, Vermin is actually playing a character. In the past, he really knew how to put on a show, campaigning on a platform of zombie apocalypse awareness and time travel research. Sprinkling dust on one of his homophobic opponents should encourage the point that he's not actually being serious about anything. Uh, uh, Jesus told me to, uh, make Randall Terry gay. I think 2020 truly speaks volumes about the current situation within the United States since this election year, Roman Supreme chose to actually take this run seriously, arguing that reality is stranger than what any type of satire would present. I'll be the first one to admit, it's actually fairly remarkable to see Roman Supreme talk actual policy instead of making a mockery of American public affairs. This is for the kids. Kids are naturally anti-authoritarians, they are naturally non-conformists, and they naturally love humor. Kids want to change the world, and that is what kids and libertarians have in common. And I say if the kids don't learn about libertarianism from libertarians, they will be hearing about it by the, from the socialists. These are scary times to be a kid, and we must present our vision for a transition to a post-state world. We need to explain how we will alleviate the suffering as we pull the rug of government out from under them in a way that makes sense. We must be able to demonstrate that we are a party of love and compassion and caring. I believe that we are, and I believe that we can. Thank you. I don't know if you guys knew this, but around four years ago, I considered myself more of a libertarian if anything. But even back then, I didn't like associating myself with the party. Whenever someone would ask me who my positions were close to, instead of saying Gary Johnson, I would say someone like Ron Paul. Over time, my political beliefs shifted, but not due to the bastardization of the libertarian party. No, this is not a video attacking the ideology, but rather just how much of a joke the party propping up their propositions has become. And it's actually fairly discouraging that the United States is a two-party system unlike other countries around the globe. Choosing between a Democrat and Republican is the normal here, while in Europe, it's normal to choose from, say, four different parties. And honestly, I believe the two-party system is one of the main reasons why the United States has become increasingly more polarized with each waking day. To many, the system is broken and they want to kick over the table and try something new. It's not like we're restricted to vote for just two parties. It's just that a vast majority of people tend to not vote for a third party, perhaps because it's been deemed by popular culture that one is throwing their vote away if they choose to do so. And the idea of 
of many Americans, why vote for someone who has no chance of winning? I mean, regarding that logic, why vote at all then? Should I vote for someone who I absolutely despise just because they're the lesser of two evils? Or should I even vote at all? Gary Johnson, who was the Libertarian Party's nominee back in 2016, was at some point polling near the 15% mark. If he had made it to 15%, he would have hit the threshold to participate in the debates, bringing more attention to his campaign. Oddly enough, Gary Johnson, despite a lot of his weird quirks, was one of the most normal of the candidates who rallied to be the nominee for the Libertarian Party. And although he ended up floundering his campaign with moments like this, his almost above average performance for a third party shouldn't be unnoticed. What I'm saying here is that the idea of a third party shouldn't be dead in the water, because maybe one day, it'll go far. It's at this point where I want to ask you, the viewer, to tell me what your thoughts are about the voting third party. Would you consider it throwing away your vote? Should a person vote for a third party because although they know their candidate isn't going to win, the principles the individual stands for is enough to merit support for them? Make sure to comment below and let me know, or else this man will be appearing in your dreams later tonight. And with that, I leave you with one last gift. You are very welcome. No, we don't really care if you're illegal or not straight conservatives beware. We about to shake up this whole place. Democrats be scared. Our economic policies are straight up blazing fair. Modern party here. Libertarian the only third party that's not insane. We're not insane. Libertarian style.